two work together except they be agreed? Except they be agreed. Unless you're thinking, I want to do this for my community. He's thinking, I want to do this for my community. And you're all thinking, I want to do this for my community. It's never going to work. It's never going to work because what? You do not have God's laws. It is God's laws that unite blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We tried, we tried games, right? We tried Black Panthers. We tried the Brown Berets. We tried uh, um, the Young Lords. We tried SNCC. We tried the Pan-Africanist movement. And none of it has worked. Bronx on East 49th and 3rd Ave, who you are according to the Bible. That's Isaiah right. 7, 61 verse 1. Let's teach these black, Hispanics, and Native Americans why we are out here. Why are we out here today? Read the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 1. What did the Most High charge us black, Hispanic, and Native American with? Read. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Uh -huh. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. To preach good tidings unto the meek. To preach the good news to preach the gospel unto the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Right. Read. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Those that are getting shot down. Those in communities with the highest abortion rates, highest murder rates, lowest education, most oppression, most suppression. Read. To proclaim liberty to the captives. To proclaim liberty, to proclaim freedom unto the captives. Those who are mentally and still physically enslaved. Enslaved in what? Politics. Enslaved in what? Economics. Enslaved in what? Education. Read. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Now you may say, I'm not in prison. I'm walking around. I'm free. You are mentally enslaved. Right. You are mentally enslaved. How do I know that? Because many of you voted in this most recent election. Read My out. brother, did you vote? Did you vote come forth? What's your name? Say it again. Perez. Perez. My name is Gabriel. Come forth. Come forth. Let's talk. Let's dialogue. You said you voted. Who'd you vote for? Joe Biden. No, say it again. Joe. Joe Biden. Do you know? So now my brother here said he voted for Joe Biden. Joe Biden said in the news publicly, if you do not vote for me and you vote for Trump, you are not black. Read up. You know he said that. You know he said that. This is the same person, the same presidential. I didn't hear that. Right, you didn't hear that. So you got to watch the news. The scripture say, watch and pray. Right? Give me that in Isaiah. Where is it? Isaiah 50. Let me find that. Off the answer, let me find that. Watch and pray. Now the scriptures say, watch and pray. You gotta watch your circumstances. You gotta watch your surroundings. Why you say? Why you say? He said, if you, don't vote he for said if you don't know whether or not you're gonna vote for Trump or me, you're not black. He might as well say you're not black or Hispanic. Yeah, right, right. Joe Biden, the presidential nominee, said that. Now, 1993. What did he say? My sister, listen up. I'm talking about the election right now. My brother just said he voted for Joe Biden. Did you vote, my sister? You did. What's your name, my sister? <laughs> Say it again. Anna. Say it again. Anna. Anna. Anna and Perez. Now, my sister, who'd you vote for? Let me guess. You voted for Joe Biden. You can't say. All right. But let's say you did vote for Joe Biden, right? Because most blacks and Hispanics vote for whoever's in the Democratic nominee. Correct? So now Joe Biden said, if you don't know whether you're going to vote for Trump or me, you're not black. In 1993, Joe Biden what? Called our black men predators. He said, we have to get them off the streets. Those young black and Hispanic men, they're gonna hit my, my mother over the head with the pipe. They're gonna touch my wife. They're gonna touch my daughter, Perez. Where are you going? You, you gotta go? So now Anna, he said, they're gonna hit my, my wife over the head with the pipe. They're gonna, they're gonna chase my son. They're gonna touch my daughter. That's what Joe Biden said, the Democratic nominee for president. And it's looking like he's going to win. That's who many of, of us so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans voted for. My brother, did you vote? You did not. Come forth. What's your name? Ah, oh, my brother, don't be shy, bro. Come on, man. Now, like I was saying, right, my brother, listen up. Get that. Isaiah. 
This is what the scriptures say. You have to watch and pray. You have to watch your circumstances. You have to watch your surroundings. You have to watch what people say. Read. The book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 38. Come on. Watch ye and pray. Uh -huh. Lest ye enter into temptation. Come on. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. Read it from the top. Watch ye and pray. Watch ye and pray. Watch your surroundings. Watch your, uh, your, uh, your circumstances, your estate that we are in as blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans. In the ghettos, in Brooklyn, in Bronx, in Queens, in Detroit, in Chicago, in Compton. We have to watch that. You have to watch that. We ain't been in those conditions when Bill Clinton was president, he was a Democrat. When Obama was president, he was a Democrat. And the Republicans the same way. Now Anna, has a, has a Democrat or Republican, have they ever changed the, the estate of black, Hispanics, and Native Americans? They have not. You're saying no, yet you voting. That's confusion, I'm confused now. Say it again. Now you're confused too, right? Read that again. Watch ye and pray, uh -huh. lest ye enter into temptation. Lest ye enter into temptation. What is tempting? To vote. Because, let me explain it. You see your communities, you see Trayvon Martin, you see Freddie Gray, you see uh, uh, Walter Wallace who just got shot down in Philly. You see those things, and now what? You're hopeless. You're tempted to what now? Go and seek justice through voting. When the scriptures say we are not to vote, it is against God's laws and commandments. Read that, Deuteronomy 17. The scriptures say explicit, explicitly, we are not to vote or have any other person set over us. Deuteronomy 17, 15, come on. Anna, did you know that the Bible is against voting? You did not, right? Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17, verse 15. Uh -huh. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God... Verse 15. Uh -huh. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, uh -huh. whom the Lord thy God shall choose. Whom the Lord thy God shall choose. Anna, you're listening. The Lord thy God did not choose Joe Biden. He did not choose Donald Trump right. to be the ruler over you. Who did he choose? Give me Isaiah 55 verse 4. Let's see who the Most High chose to be the commander, to be the leader over so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Let's see if it's Donald Trump. Let's see if it's Joe Biden. Let's see if it's Barack Obama. Read Isaiah 55 verse 4. Come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 55 verse 4. Read. Behold, I have given him for a witness unto uh, to the people. From the top. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people. Uh -huh. A leader and a commander to the people. A leader and a commander. What do they call the president? The commander in chief. My brother, what do they call the president? Anna, what do they call the president? The commander in chief. The president is not your commander. He is not your leader. Isaiah, in the spirit of Christ, he's going to say who the leader is. Read. Behold, thou shalt call a nation, but thou knowest not. Anna, Anna, where you going, Anna? Now Anna says she voted. Now she's confused. I'm cleaning up the confusion for you, and you're leaving. Now she waved me off. Read. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee. So that commander, that leader that's over the blacks, Hispanics, are, is Christ. My brother with the Yankee hat. Read that again. My brother, what's your name? Let's, so now you voted, right? Did you vote? You said no. Read. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and... Verse 4, Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, uh -huh. a leader and a commander to the people. A leader and a commander to the people. Give me Isaiah 1 verse 3. Because blacks and Hispanics were rushing and were running to the polls, were voting early, were waiting in long, in long lines for three hours to vote for a person that is not going to change your condition. Right. Yet what? We don't even know who we're voting for, who we're voting to. Read that, 1 verse 3. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3, uh -huh. the ox knoweth his owner, uh -huh. and the ass his best is great. So Isaiah is talking about the ox and the ass. Those are two dumb animals. Animals of what? Labor. Right? Read. But Israel doth not know. So Isaiah is saying the ox and the ass, they know who they belong to. They know who their owner is. But what? But but Israel. But who? But Israel. But who? Israel. But Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, raise yourself, uh, officer. So-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans. Who is that? Judah, Benjamin, 
Levi, Ephraim, Manasseh, Simeon, all the way down to Naphtali. Bring it out. Now, my brother, what do you see? In, what do you see yourself in the sign right here? Where's your father from? Dominican. Dominican. Dominican is what? That is a byword. That is a slave term that they gave you in slavery. Right. Your true name, according to the Bible, is Simeon, right. meaning affliction heard. That's what that means. Now, Dominican, break that word down. What does that mean? What does Dominican mean? It's, it's Spanish. But what does it mean, though? Do you know? Dominican is Latin, meaning dog of the Lord. Domini, meaning the Lord, and cat, and cat coming from canine, is, is a dog. So they're calling you a loyal dog of the Lord. Are you a loyal dog? You're not. Yet, yeah, why do they call you that? Because we are a cursed people. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. My brother, we are a cursed people according to the Bible. That's why you see us in the South Bronx. That's why, that's why you see us in gangs. We are not meant to be in gangs. We are not meant to be blood. We are not meant to be crips. Now, my brother, what does blood stand for? What does that stand for? Blacks and Latinos overcoming our destruction, bro. Blacks right. and Latinos overcoming our destruction. Not only that, but we are bloodline of our descendants, bro. Brother, blood means descendants. what? You're right. Brotherly love. Blacks no, no, no. and Hispanics. Blacks and Latinos Same thing. overcoming oh, our destruction. Are blacks and Latinos not brothers? Blacks and Latinos overcoming our destruction, homie. Brotherly love overcoming oppression and destruction. I didn't say that. But well, either, either way, we're overcoming that's, that's oppression and destruction. Yeah, that is the original, like you said. Now, what does it become today? Our blood overcoming oppression and, uh, 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 our oppression and destruction? Or are we shooting each other down in the streets? Bring it up. Give me, give me um, Hosea 4. Or are we shooting each other down in the streets? Same thing with Crips. Crips was what? Community, revolution, and progress. Now, Bloods and Crips are slaughtering each other at an, at an uh, uh, exponential rate. That was not the initial uh, plan for those two organizations. Now, we, we, we got a memo. There's no more color banging, all right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no more color banging, yeah. right? But what? In, in Compton, in LA? Are you kidding me? They're still, we're still shooting each other down. We're still, in Newark, in Newark, New Jersey, there's much gang violence. Most of the shootings in New Jersey and Newark, New Jersey are attributed, are attributed to gang violence, right? Now, what does the Bible have to say about that? Read. My sister, listen up. What are we talking about? Gang violence. What are we talking about? That blacks and Hispanics are a cursed people. Read. The book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 1. Uh -huh. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Read. Book ye children of Israel. So, my brother, I didn't even get your name. What's your name? Pablo. Pablo. My sister, what's your name? I can't hear you. I'm going to just call you my sister. So, Pablo, my sister, read. Hear ye the word of the Lord, ye uh -huh. children of Israel. Ye children of Israel. It's specifying an audience. The Bible is the book for the Israelites, to the Israelites, and by the Israelites. Right. Read. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. The Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, which is what? Jerusalem. Read. Because there is no truth. No mercy, no knowledge of God in the land. So it's twofold, Jerusalem and America, where we are today, the black, Hispanics, Native Americans. There is no knowledge, truth, or mercy. Read. But swearing, and lying, and killing, and stealing, and committing adultery. Now, is that not prevalent in our communities, my sister? Swearing, lying, killing, committing adultery, brothers stealing each other, uh, uh, other brothers' wives, sisters sleeping with other sisters' husbands. Is that not happening in our community, uh, my sister? It is. Read. They break out and blood touches blood. They break out like wild animals. I shoot you on the street. A 74-year-old man, either in, I don't know if it was Queens or Bronx, was beaten to near death a couple weeks ago. Did you see the video? He was walking with his cane. Somebody came, somebody came up behind him, hit him over the head. The brother just died yesterday in the hospital. That's not happening in a so-called Jewish neighborhood. That's not happening in, in, in uh, Upper Manhattan. Right. What does that happen? In the Bronx, right. in Queens, right. in Brooklyn. Right. That's what's happening. Now, my sister, did you vote in this election? You did not. Come, I, can't, I can barely hear you. Why not? Why didn't you vote? Did, you said there's what? She didn't want to. Because what? There's no point, right? There's no point. Give me Lamentations Force verse 17. The scriptures talk about us voting. We are not to vote and we are not to trust in our oppressor. Right. But when you go 
you, you punch, uh, punch in your ballot, I'm voting for Donald Trump. I'm voting for Joe Biden. Right. What is that doing? Like you just said, my sister, it's pointless. Pablo, it's pointless. Read. 417. After Jeremiah. It's pointless, like my sister said. Pablo was pointless, like my sister said. Read Lamentations 4, verse 17. The book of Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 17. Uh -huh. As for us, our eyes yet fail for vain help. As for us, as for us so called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, our eyes have yet failed, meaning they failed us, right? It has not come to pass for what? As for us, our eyes have yet failed. Have yet failed, have yet uh, shown to come to pass for what? For our vain help. Our vain help, meaning what? The so called white man, meaning the election, meaning Joe Biden, meaning uh, Donald Trump. Read. In our watching, we watch for a nation that could not save us. Yes, sir. Read that again. In our watching, we watch for a nation that could not save us. They hunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets. They hunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets because we are a cursed people. Give me Proverbs uh, uh, 1, 20 and 1. Now, my brother, we are a destroyed people, are we not? Come forth, Pablo, let's talk. Are we a destroyed people? Yes, we are a destroyed people, like the Bible talks about. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 20, verse 1. Uh -huh. Wine is a monster. Uh -huh. Strong drink is raging. Uh -huh. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Read that one more time. Wine is a monster. Wine is a monster. You drink too much, you get drunk, you will be mocked because people will see you in your foolishness. Read. Strong drink is raging. Uh -huh. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Now, Pablo, you have some strong in that bottle right there? Give me some rock five and under. You have some strong in that bottle right there? You know that the Bible teaches about not getting drunk, not, uh, not being in drunkenness, and not drinking in the daytime. You know the Bible talks about that. About, and why do our people drink? Because we turn that to alleviate our pain. We turn to that as a comfort. We turn to that for hope. The bottle is not going to bring you hope. The bottle is always going to bring you destruction. You realize that? Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 20. Uh -huh. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So now, yes, let me read 15, verse 4. So because my brother, what is our hope? What is our comfort? As a black, as, as a black, so-called black man and a so-called Hispanic man, what is our comfort? What am I supposed to turn to for comfort? What are we supposed to turn to? You have any idea? The Bible is supposed to be our comfort. Read. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. Uh -huh. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So whatsoever was written aforetime, Pablo, was written for our learning. Meaning everything from Genesis all the way to Revelation was written for us to learn from. Those are the testimonies of God. Those are the testimonies of Christ and the prophets. Read. That through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. That through patience and comfort of the scriptures that through patience and comfort of the scriptures, Pablo, we might have hope. Not hope in the bottle. Not hope in games. Isaiah, Isaiah 5, 22. But hope in what? The scriptures. That's where our hope is. Not hope in voting. Not hope in Donald Trump. Not hope in Joe Biden. No. But in Christ the Messiah That's and his right. law, statutes, and commandments. Right. That's where our hope is. Straight like that. Read. The book of Sirach, chapter 31, verse 28. Wine measurably drunk and in season, verse 27. Uh -huh. Wine is as good as life to a man. Wine is as good as life to a man. There's nothing wrong with drinking, right? Christ drank. His first miracle was what, Pablo? What was Christ's first miracle? You don't know. He turned water into wine at a wedding. He was called a wine bibber by the Pharisees, right? Because what? They saw him drinking and they incorrectly said that he was a drunkard, but he was not. Christ drink moderately, like the Bible says. Read. Wine is as good as life to a man, uh -huh. if it be drunk moderately. If the wine be drunk moderately, moderately, not in drunkenness, but moderately, which our people do not know. Blacks and Hispanics do not know moderation. They do not know moderation. Read. 
when it comes to eating, when it comes to drinking. That's why in our communities, you see checkers, you see Popeyes, you see McDonald's, you see all types of fast food because we do not drink or eat moderately. But the Bible is telling us that that's what we need to do. Read. What life is then to a man that is without wine? Uh -huh. for, for it was made to make men glad. Wine was made to make men glad. It was made to make men merry, right? But in moderation. Read. Wine dr measurably drunk and in season bringeth gladness of the heart. Wine measurably drunk and in season. In season meaning what? At the proper time. 11 o'clock in the morning is not the proper time to be drinking wine. Nine, I'm not even trying to come at you. I'm just, I'm just saying straight facts according to the Bible. Bring it up. Nine o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning, that is not the time to be drinking. Read. Wine measurably drunk and in season. And in season at the right time, read. Bringeth gladness to the heart. Bringeth gladness to the heart. Bringeth gladness to your mind, to your spirit. That's what the Bible is talking about. Read. And cheerfulness of the mind. And cheerfulness of the mind. But wine drunken with excess maketh bitterness of the mind. But wine drunken in excess, which is what? Which is why you see the highest rates of drunkenness in the blacks and Hispanic communities. Right. You always see people on the corner, stooped over, drunk, out of their mind. You, I don't see that in upper, Man in upper Manhattan. I don't see that on Eastern Parkway in Brooklyn. Where do I see that? In the Bronx, in Brooklyn, in Queens, in the ghettos what blacks and Hispanics dwell. Right. Read. But wine drunken with excess maketh bitterness of the mind, uh -huh. with brawling and quarreling. With brawling and quarreling. That's how you always have those bar fights, because people are drunk. That's why you always have people approaching one another in their drunkenness, in their anger, in their rage, and now you want to fight. You ever, you ever knew that person, when they get drunk, all they want to do is fight? They just want to throw hands? I know you know somebody like that. Of course you do. We all do. That's why the scriptures say we must drink moderately and in season. In seasoning meaning what? The right time. Right. Drunkenness increases the rage of a fool uh -huh. till he offends. Uh -huh. It diminishes strength and maketh wounds. That's it. So, Pablo, you understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? That it's fine to drink, but you got to drink moderately in season at the right time. Now, at this time, when the sun is at high noon, it's not the time for you to be drinking, Pablo. It's not the time for you to be drinking. You understand what I'm saying? Now, Pablo, come forth. You got something? Hey, Pablo, I want to talk to you because my name is Ofnio by the way. My name is Ofnio by the way, right? Come, come a little bit closer. Let me talk to you. I want to ask you some questions. I want to ask you some questions. I, I look at you and I can see that you, you've gone through it. You've been going through it, right? Why do our people join gangs? Guys, I heard you said earlier about brotherly love overcoming oppression and is it destruction or depression? I, never, I said blacks and Latinos overcoming our destruction. Bro. Blacks and Latinos overcoming our destruction. I like that. I like that, right? But is that what it's truly about or is it about something else? Now, that's what it really is. That's what it's really about. Like, I'm saying are we against politics, poverty, police brutality, and false imprisonment? You're against politics, poverty, police brutality, and false, false imprisonment. Yeah. We are too. But where are all these murders coming from? Where are all these drugs? How did the murders and the drugs get involved this in all that? This country was built on murders, kidnapping, thieving. Absolutely. All that, I, I Absolutely. Show. But now, yeah, this, within this, that like organization. This, this country was built, bro. That's, that's how this country was built. Bro. Right. Within that organization, how did that get, how did that come about? What did it, where did it, if it was really about Actually, wow, overcoming oppression, things, where did the, where the drugs things. come from? For a sense of family, homie. Say that again? A sense of family. A bro. sense of family. Yeah, I got that. Listen, what do you, what do you got? Listen to this. Be sober? Yeah. The aged man, right there. So, Titus 2. Listen to this. Listen to this, Pablo. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 2. That the aged man be sober, brave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity. Read it again from the top. Uh, Titus 2, verse 2. That the aged man. How old are you, Pablo? 28. So the Bible says that the aged man should be what? Be sober. Sober, what else? Grave. Grave means serious. Read. Temperate. Temperate. Know how to, uh, how to deal, okay? Not going off, flying off the, the handles. Read. Sound in faith. Sound in faith. Charity. Uh huh. In patience. Uh huh. You believe in you believe in God, Pablo. You believe in God. Yeah, I believe in a higher power. A yeah. higher power. You believe in you believe in Jesus Christ. 
I ain't going to name specific names, name. but I know it's somebody up there. Okay. Um, so, so we're going to see where this comes from and how our young men get caught up in this. And uh, my sister and I just came up. What we're talking about is gang, uh, these, these gangs within our communities, where it comes from, where it stems from. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 51, verse 20. You listening, Pablo? Thy sons have fainted. So God said, this is a prophecy. He said, our sons have fainted. What does it mean, fainted? Since we became weak. The, uh, the officer told you before that you're an Israelite. You know what it means to be an Israelite? You know what it means to be an Israelite from the tribe of Simeon? Your ancestors were warriors. Right. Your ancestors were warriors. So how do we become so weak to the state that we're in today? That God is telling us. He said what? Thy sons have fainted. He said, our sons have fainted. Read. They lie at the head of all the streets. He said, they lie at the head of all the streets. If you go to any corner, what do you see? Brothers hanging out. In front of the liquor store, in front of the corner store, what do you see? Brothers hanging out. This is prophecy. God said that our men have fainted, became weak, and they hang at all the corners. Read. They lie at the head of all the streets uh -huh. as a wild bull in the net. So God said so-called black man, Hispanic man, Native American man today, they said they're like a wild bull in a net. A wild bull in a net. Run. We're in this trap and we cannot get out. That's what God said our people are, are like today. So if you put, if you can imagine a wild bull in a net, it's bucking in every which way, but it's not getting anywhere. Our people are fighting out against each other on every, on, in every city. We got bloods, we got crips, we got gangs and disciples. Where did that come from? Where did the hate come from? If it's really about brotherly love or blacks and Latinos overcoming oppression and destruction, then where did this uh, crips versus bloods come from? Where did this GD versus uh, uh, black disciples come from? Where did all this come from? Where did, the, where did the drug politics come from? How do we start selling drugs to our own people if it's about, it about uplifting our people? Segregation, you know Willie Lynch, right? You know Willie, Willie Lynch, Lynch, yes. Divide and conquer, divide uh -huh. and conquer and all that. Right. But that's all this segregation, all this separate shit. And you all said that. it came from Willie Lynch. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, divide and conquer. Yeah, divide, yeah. divide and conquer. So yeah. what is Bloods and Crips then? If we're on the same page, if, if the, our enemy, if their goal is to divide and conquer us, are we helping the situation by joining gangs? Or are we fighting against the situation? Both. Both? Both, both. We're, you we're helping them. Now, now, you gotta understand. And niggas, niggas, the way that California is structured, uh -huh. niggas is community based, bro. Right. So it's all, it's all about your community, homie. And it just so happened that you got Crips and you got Bloods, homie. That's just what happened, bro. But I'm saying everybody revolutionary, though. Listen what the Bible says. Give me Psalms 133. So I understand that, that when you go into certain communities, yes, our people separated each other. But listen what God said. The book of Psalms, chapter 133, verse 1. Uh -huh. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. So God said, it's good for us to dwell together in unity. He didn't give me Zephaniah um, to uh, gather yourselves together. So he said, God said, that it's a, ble it's a beautiful thing for our people to dwell together in unity. Pablo, that's where our enemy is afraid of. He's, they are afraid of us united. These 12 tribes, we are one people. We're one people, but we make their job easier because we're so divided. It's All always right. blacks versus Hispanics, bloods versus Crips. We separate ourselves, light skin versus dark skin. Yes, that, yes uh, it stands from Willie Lynch, but we play right into it. We're supposed to elevate. And the Bible is the answer. Read. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. So God said, gather yourselves together, nation not desired. Does, 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 does uh, our former slave masters, they don't care. They hate all of us the same way. They hate all of us the same way. God said, gather yourselves together, O nation not desired. We need to gather together as what together as one people. That's the only way we're gonna blacks and Latinos are gonna overcome oppression and destruction. Right. Read it again. Gather yourselves together. Yay, gather yourselves together, O nation not desired. The book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 2. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. You hear that, Pablo? That's what our young men didn't learn. That's what we haven't been teaching our young men. Do not follow a multitude to do evil. So just because everybody else is doing it, do not get involved. Just like you said, if you go to certain neighborhoods, 
uh, yes, there, there's predominantly blood or they might be predominantly crip. But to teach the young men to go, go out and follow them, God, what did God say about it? Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. He said don't follow a multitude to go and do evil. Pablo, the gangs is, is all evil. Murder, violence, it's all evil. Do bloods teach, uh, teach men how to be fathers? Do they teach them how to be husbands? Do they, do they uh, preach education? Bring it out. Now, how come they don't? How come I've never seen that in the news? I've never seen it on the papers. When I see, when I see brothers with, with, uh, wearing flags on the streets, the none, nothing about them says in. every you're education of family. In. You're not on the inside looking out. Say we ain't never see the paper. You're on the outside looking in. Uh -huh. We've never seen the paperwork. we supposed to study federal and state laws for one hour a day. Uh -huh. Read revolutionary books one hour a day. Uh -huh. Should like every all edu have a GED, edu like all education is looking. Department of Education, Department of Correspondence, Security, Head of Financing, shit like that. Like we teach all that, brother. Like so. It's just, so is that about when you're learning that stuff? And I, I hear you about educating yourself. Are you learning that to uplift your community, or are you just learning that to get out of jail when you get locked up for doing something illegal? It's about three P's. You're supposed to provide, produce, and protect. Provide, like yourself, produce, and protect. Yeah, okay. by yourself, your family, and your hood. Uh -huh. Period. It's just a lot of niggas don't get that now. It's 2020. It's so now, do you around. agree with, I, and I feel you on that, provide, protect, and... Provide, produce, and protect. Pro Three provide, P's. produce, and protect. Three P's, but bro. if my way of providing is selling drugs to my own people, you agree with that? Nah, hell no, but look, like I said, we against Wait, wait, you said no, but. You said no, but. No, we you? against politics, poverty, police, brutality, uh -huh. and imprisonment. The main one Politics, we focus on poverty, the main police one, brutality, false imprisonment. And the main one that we focus on is poverty. Uh huh. And what's poverty? Poverty is a fucked up financial circumstance. And how do you overcome a fucked up financial circumstance? A fucked up financial situation? By how? securing the bag, homie. In whatever which way, shape, form, In whatever fashion, way you that, that you can. Yes. Okay. You ready? Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, give me Amos 3 verse 3. Now, Pablo, you made a lot of good points. You said you weren't supposed to read revolutionary books. You're supposed to study uh, uh, um, um, the laws. Right, study the law, state, federal laws for one hour a day. But you said you made a good point. You said it's 2020, excuse my language, but some niggas don't understand that. Some, some of our men, young black and Hispanic men, what? They have a different mindset. They're not getting it. Each one, teach one. Right, so not, so everybody that on that page, Amos 3 verse 3. The book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 3. Come on. Can two walk together? Can what? Can two walk together? Unless? Except they be agreed? Except what? Except they be agreed? Except they be agreed. Pablo, listen to what I'm saying. Let's say two people are walking. If one person is walking right, I'm walking left. Are we going to walk down the same path? We are going to separate. It's inevitable. It's going to happen. Like you said, not every person, not every man has the same mindset. So if you're thinking about what? I want to secure the bag for, uh, uh, for my hood. The other person is thinking, I want to secure the bag for myself. How are you two going to go together? How are you two going to work together? Is it possible? I'm speaking facts. It's not possible. Like you said, not every man has the same mindset. Not every man has the same goal. If you're securing the bag for your hood, I'm securing the bag for myself. We have different mindsets. We're not going to walk down the same path. Right. So when I see you getting the bag for the hood, I'm going to be like, damn, I want his bag that he has. Then what? I'm going to shoot you. Right? I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to stab you. I'm going to do some, some grimy stuff. Right? To what? To get that bag. If my mindset is to get the bag at any cost for myself, we cannot grow together. That's what the officer was saying. Read it again. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Can two walk together except they be agreed? It's not possible. Two people cannot walk together unless they're walking in the same direction. That's simple logic right there. Read it again. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Uh -huh. Will a lion roar in the forest? Read it again, verse, two. verse three. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Except they be agreed. Unless you're thinking, I want to do this for my community. He's thinking, I want to do this for my community. And you're all thinking, I want to do this for my community. It's never going to work. It's never going to work because what? You do not have God's laws. It is God's laws that unite blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We tried, we tried gangs, right? We tried Black Panthers. We tried the Brown Berets. We tried uh, um, the Young Lords. We tried SNCC. We tried the Pan-Africanist movement. And none of it has worked. Am I right, Pablo? None of it has worked. We're still in the poorest communities. 
You still got crime. You still got abortion. A Planned Parenthood on every damn corner. Yes, read. Hold that. Give me Zechariah 11, 11 verse 14. Because probably you said, from the beginning, it was not so. From the beginning, it was not so. But what? The white man came, infiltrated those movements, like he did with the Black Panther movement, like he did with the Brown Berets, like he did with the Young Lords, and introduced what? Drugs, money, and covetousness. And that was of the Bible. Read. The book of Zechariah. That was of the Bible, Pablo. It's straight prophecy. It was going to happen. Read Zechariah 11 verse 14. Come on. Zechariah 11 verse 14. Uh -huh. Then I cut asunder mine other staff, uh -huh. even the bands, that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. That I might what? Pablo, listen up. That I might break the bands of brotherhood between Judah and Israel. That I might break the bands of what? Brotherhood between Judah and Israel. Break the bands of brotherhood between Judah and Israel. That's why you have Latin kings. That's why you have gangster disciples. That's why you have bloods. That's why you have crips. They infiltrated it to what? Now separate the black and Hispanic man from one another. I get what you're saying about wanting to build up your community, about wanting to build up your hood. But when you don't have men that move in the same mindset as you, that have their own agendas. I want to get the money from my pockets. I want to get the money from myself. Scheming. I want to scheme. I want to be grimy. And that's what happens. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.